Hey guys, it's Heidi. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. In today's video, I'm going to be baking cookies. I'm going to be making Trey's favorite, which is no-bake cookies. I'm going to be making my favorite, which are peanut butter blossoms. And I'm going to be making the standard chocolate chip cookie. These recipes have been in my family for many, many years, ever since I was little. I have vivid memories of making these exact same cookies with my mom, and we make, we've made them every year since. So I was in the mood for cookies, and I want I just wanted to bring you guys along and share these really yummy cookie recipes with you. And without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first cookies that I'm going to be working on are the no-bake cookies, just because you need to melt the ingredients and uh, they are obviously no-bake cookies, so you plop them onto some parchment paper and let them harden and then they are done. So I'll work on those first so that way they can harden while I'm working on the batter for the other cookies. So let's get started with the no-bakes. To make these no-bakes you will need white sugar, almond bark, butter, vanilla, peanut butter, quick oats, and milk. So the first thing we need to do to make these no-bakes is to add half a cup of butter to the pan, that's one stick, half a cup of milk, three squares of almond bark, and one and three-fourths cup of sugar. Here's one cup, and here's the three-fourths cup. Now we're going to turn the burner on high and bring all of these ingredients to a boil. Make sure to stir it so nothing sticks on the bottom of the pan. As you can see, the chocolate is starting to melt. And as we're waiting for that to melt, we're going to take some parchment paper or wax paper, spread it up out. and lay it out. You might have to put something on the edges to make sure that it stays flat. But that'll be what we use to plop our cookies down onto. So now that it has come to a boil, you're gonna let it boil for a minute and a half. Be sure to continue stirring so that way it doesn't stick to the bottom and it doesn't boil over. After it's been a minute and a half of it boiling, go ahead and turn off your burner and take it off the heat. Now that you've taken the chocolate mixture off of the stove, um, you're gonna wanna move kinda quick because it can harden. We're gonna put two teaspoons of vanilla extract Next, we're going to add in our oats. And make sure that they are quick cook oats. This says you need three cups. So there's one cup, two cups, and three cups of oats. And then we're going to need a half a cup of peanut butter. And so I have half a cup of peanut butter, and I'm going to take the peanut butter and add it into the chocolate. We've already added the oats. And you're gonna to wanna to stir it all up. Okay, once you have your whole mixture combined together, then what we're gonna do is I will move the camera down here so you guys can see. Once you have your whole mixture combined, you're going to want to take a big spoon like this. You're gonna to want to take a big spoon, like a tablespoon, and take a clump and pop it onto a piece of parchment paper. Thank you. 
and you're going to want to keep on putting globs of the mixture onto parchment paper until you run out of batter. If your mixture ever gets kind of hard to clump together, like this one is starting to get really kind of hard, you can put it back on the stove on medium heat and kind of remelt it. So don't worry if it starts setting while you're plopping your cookies. You could just put it back on the burner and warm it up a little bit so that way it moves easier. As you can see, after you put them on the burner again, they do become a little stickier again. That makes it easier to plop it onto the parchment paper. So I'm gonna take this back off the heat and continue making my cookies. So as you can see, all of the cookies are plopped down on the parchment paper, and now we just have to wait for them to cool and set. This one's already getting a little bit set, because these are the first ones that I did. And you'll know when they're set because you'll be able to pick them up all in one cookie like this. But that one's still pretty hot, so we will let these sit until they cool and they will be done. Okay, so while these no-bakes continue to set up, they're already getting pretty set up. I'm able to pick them up like normal cookies. We're going to start on the peanut butter blossoms. These are my absolute favorite cookies, so I had to make them because <laughs> I haven't had them in a little while. So to make the peanut butter blossoms, you will need baking soda, white sugar, all-purpose flour, there's brown sugar in this canister, so brown sugar, peanut butter obviously, vanilla, one egg, a stick of butter, salt, and to top them off, Reese's Minis. A lot of people use the uh, Hershey's Kisses, but me and my family do them with the Reese's Minis, so that's what we're gonna do. So before we even start working on the batter, let's preheat our oven to 375 degrees. Okay, so while we're waiting for the oven to preheat to 375 degrees, Let's get started on making the dough for our cookies. Get yourself a big old bowl. So first what we're gonna do is we're going to combine the, I'm looking at my recipe here. We're going to combine half a cup of butter or margarine, whichever one you wanna use, but I'm gonna use butter this time. So half a cup of butter is one stick. So I'm going to plop the stick of butter in there. Then we're going to need half a cup of brown sugar. So I have my half cup measuring cup here and I'm going to measure out half a cup of brown sugar. Does anybody know if those brown sugar bears, like the ones that they put in brown sugar to help keep it soft actually work? Because I definitely need something to help brown sugar stay soft. It's pretty soft in here but it's definitely a little harder than I would have liked it to be. So let me know in the comments if you have one of those uh, brown sugar bears, and let me know if they work for you. Because if so, I may have to get myself one to keep my brown sugar soft. So we're going to take half a cup of packed brown sugar and put it in our bowl. And next we'll need half a cup of granulated sugar. So we have our half cup of regular granulated white sugar. I'm gonna pour that in there. And then we need half a cup of peanut butter. And so now we have half a cup of peanut butter. So we're gonna scrape that into our bowl. Okay, so once you have the butter, brown sugar, regular sugar, and peanut butter in the bowl, you're going to want to take a hand mixer and mix it all together. Okay, so you're going to want to mix your ingredients with a mixer until it's all well combined. You're going to need a half teaspoon of salt, so go ahead and give it a few shakes in there. We're gonna need one teaspoon of baking soda. So I have my teaspoon here, and we're gonna put in one teaspoon of baking soda. And then we're going to need one and three-fourths cup of flour. And that's about one and three-fourths cup of flour. 
So then we're gonna add that into our bowl. Then we're gonna add one teaspoon of vanilla. So just give a splash. And then finally we're going to crack in one egg. I always like to crack my egg into a measuring cup first, just to make sure that I don't get any shells into my batter and then I'll then I have to try to pick the shell out. So you know crack the egg there into the measuring cup and put it into our bowl. So now that all the ingredients are added together, we're going to take the mixer and combine it all together. Once you mix your dough all together, it should be sticky and should be able to form into little balls. So it should be able to make dough balls like this so that way you could put them on your sheet pan. Okay, so while we were making the peanut butter blossom cookie dough, these set up really nicely. They, they can be a little bit crumbly, especially because of the oatmeal. And I didn't do the best job about clumping them together, but they are set. I can pick them up as one whole cookie and they are totally set. I'm going to take all the finished cookies and put them into a gallon size Ziploc bag for Trey to enjoy when he gets home. And that'll give me a little bit more room on my countertop so that way I can work on baking the cookie dough that we just made. And there we go, all of the no-bakes are in a Ziploc bag ready to enjoy. So now that we have our peanut butter blossom cookie dough made, we're going to move on to starting to bake them. The oven has preheated to 375 degrees. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get two of my cookie sheets here and I'm going to take some vegetable oil spray and shake it. And I'm going to spray both of the sheet pans so that way the cookies don't stick to them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make these cookie dough balls and I'm going to place them on the cookie sheet far enough apart so that way they could spread out a little bit. And we're gonna fill up these trays and get our first batch in the oven. And this is how much batter is left after doing the first round of cookies. So now that they're all rolled out and put on the cookie trays, Let's go ahead and put them in the oven. We're gonna bake these for eight to 10 minutes, again at 375. Okay, so the timer just went off for the first batch of uh, peanut butter blossoms. So let's take a look at how they're looking. Ooh. There's the first one. They don't spread out too much when you first bake them, but once you put the Reese's Mini in the center of it, it definitely spreads out a little bit. Let's get the second pan. And there's the second pan. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take the cookies that just came out of the oven, and they're gonna be a little bit fragile, so be careful. And we're gonna place them on the cooling rack. If you have any that kind of crumble apart, that's okay. That means you can eat them because they're the duds. So now that the cookies have come out of the oven, I have a bag of Reese's Mini Unwrapped Peanut Butter Cups. Sorry, it's not focusing. We're gonna take the bottom of the Reese's Cup and we're going to stick it into the middle of the cookie and press down. You want your cookies to still be pretty warm so that way it will go into the cookie and it'll melt a little bit in the bottom so you'll get a nice melty Reese's cup in the center of it. So you're just going to take your mini Reese's and you're going to add one to each cookie that came out of the oven. Okay, so now that we have the first batch of cookies on the cooling rack and with the Reese's cup inside of it, 
Then we're going to take the rest of our batter and just continue baking the cookies until the batter is all gone. And be sure to grease your baking sheet every single time you put new cookie dough balls on it. Now all of the peanut butter blossoms are done and they're cooling on the cooling rack. I absolutely love peanut butter cookies and these are by far my absolute favorite cookies. Okay, so the last cookies we are going to be baking today are going to be classic chocolate chip cookies. For this recipe you will need baking soda, shortening, a 12 ounce package of chocolate chips, butter, doesn't matter if it's salted or not I don't think, two eggs, brown sugar, granulated sugar, all purpose flour, and vanilla. Okay so we're going to get started on the chocolate chip cookies. Make sure that your oven is preheated to 375 before you start baking these. My oven's already preheated because of us making the peanut butter blossoms, so I'm all set to go. But make sure that it's preheated to 375 before you start putting them in the oven, okay? Okay, we're gonna start working on our chocolate chip cookie dough. So the first thing that we have to do is we're gonna take our shortening and we're going to take our stick butter. I'm looking at the recipe past the camera. So we're gonna take the stick butter and the shortening and add it into a bowl and uh, cream those together so that way they become soft. So we're going to need half a cup of butter, which again is one stick of butter. So now we're gonna take our shortening and we're gonna need a half cup of the shortening. And I did wash this bowl and these things before I started moving on to the next one, guys, so. And we're gonna add the half a cup of shortening into the bowl as well. <clears throat> and now that you have your shortening and your butter in your bowl, go ahead and take your hand mixer. Again, I washed these in between batches. And you're going to want to cream these together so that way they're smooth and soft. So after you're done beating your uh, butter and shortening, it should look like this. It'll be smooth and easy to work with. So after we're done with that, we're going to take our baking soda and we're going to need half a teaspoon of baking soda. So there's my half a teaspoon into the bowl. And then we're gonna to wanna to add both of the sugars in. So we'll need half a cup of regular sugar. So that's half a cup of white sugar. And it says that we need one full cup of packed brown sugar. So you wanna pack the brown sugar into your measuring cup so that way there isn't any room to add any more. Nice and packed. And that's just half a cup. So there's half cup, and then I'm gonna do another half cup. And another half cup of packed brown sugar into the bowl. After you add both of your sugars and the baking soda, then we're going to want to mix again with a hand mixer. And you'll want to beat everything until it's well combined. Make sure that you get the sides and everything. And now we're going to add the eggs. Again, I like to crack them into a measuring cup. That way I make sure I get no shells in there. So we're going to take two eggs and add them to our mixture. And then we're going to take our vanilla and we're going to need one teaspoon of vanilla. So I'm just going to do a little splash and we're going to beat the mixture again with the eggs and vanilla in there. Your mixture should look a little bit wet now after adding the vanilla and the egg. And now we're going to need to add the flour. You're going to want to add the flour little by little because if you pour all three cups of flour in there at the same time, it will get all over the place and it'll mix unevenly. So what I like to do is I like to take a cup at a time and mix it in between cups 
So right now I'm just going to add one cup into my measuring cup. And I'm going to add three cups of flour, but mixing in between each cup. And there's our final cup of flour. And mix it up real good. After you combine all three cups of flour, it should look kind of clumpy like this. I should be able to form it to a ball just like the peanut butter blossoms did. But before we start rolling it into balls, we need to put in our chocolate chips. So you're going to need a full 12 ounce bag of chocolate chips, which is what this is. I use semi-sweet. So go ahead and add all of your chocolate chips into your mixing bowl. And one more time, we're gonna beat this together so that way the chocolate chips get well combined. Alrighty. So after you mix the chocolate chips in, it should look like this. And again, it should be able to clump up and turn into a ball just like the peanut butter cookies did. Okay, since all of the chocolate chip cookie dough is ready to be baked, we're going to take our sheet pans again. Again, with the vegetable oil, we're going to spray each sheet pan. And just like with the peanut butter blossoms, go ahead and take a handful of dough or a scoop of dough, whichever, and go ahead and place it on the cookie tray. But you're just gonna take balls of dough and place them on the cookie trays until you run out of the dough and all of your cookies are baked. And we're gonna bake these at 375 for eight to 10 minutes, just like the peanut butter blossoms. Okay, while we're waiting for the chocolate chip cookies to bake, I'm going to take the cooled peanut butter blossoms and put them in this container. So that way the chocolate chip cookies have a place to cool when they're done. So those are the peanut butter cookies and the chocolate chip cookies will go in this side when they are done. So the first batch of the chocolate chip cookies are done. We're gonna let them cool a little bit on the sheet pan before we transfer them to the cooling rack so that way they don't fall apart. So now that the chocolate chip cookies are cooled off a little bit, we're going to take them off of the sheet pan and place them onto the cooling rack to let them cool completely. And after you get the baked ones on the cooling rack, go ahead and spray your pan again and continue to put more cookie dough on the trays to bake all of your cookies until the dough is gone. All the chocolate chip cookies are done and they look wonderful. Now that all the chocolate chip cookies are cooled, we're gonna go ahead and stick them in the container to be enjoyed. So there you have it guys. We made chocolate chip cookies, my favorite peanut butter blossom cookies, and Trey's favorite no-bake cookies. All of these recipes are super easy to bake and they are a lot of fun to do. These recipes have been in my family for many years, so I always get such a nostalgic feeling whenever I make these. It just takes me back to when I was younger in my parents' kitchen, baking these during Christmas and just any other time really. <laughs> if you guys try these out, please let me know either by a comment down below or you can message me on Instagram at happinesswithheidi. I really hope you guys liked the video. Please don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe before you go. I really appreciate you being here and I wouldn't be doing this if it weren't for you guys. If you guys have any video ideas for what you would like to see from me, please leave them down in the comments below. That way I know what you guys would like to see next. 
I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye!